Thank you for being here. I know it's the end of the day, so I really appreciate it. My name is Krishna Subramanian, and I am uh, the COO of Comprise. We do analytics-driven data management, uh, and I'll walk you through what we do and the problems we solve, and actually show you a little bit of a demo as well. Okay. Um, you know, data is growing really, really fast. You might have seen this slide from uh, IDC, actually, that. Uh, um, data is, is going to hit about 44 zettabytes in, by 2020. So a lot of people today are thinking petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, um, even brontobytes. I don't know if you've heard of brontobytes, but uh, that's the size of the footprint. It's growing rapidly. And most of that growth is in unstructured data. So most of the growth is in um, you know, things that you would think of typically as files, you know, log files, virtual machine files, BMDKs, uh, images, videos, genetic data. Most application generated data is also file based, you know, oil and gas data, transactional uh, uh, records of statements, you know, all those kinds of things. So that's where the bulk of the data is today. Um, and we created Comprise to address that data problem, you know, to manage that data efficiently across storage while cutting over 70% of costs. Uh, and to give you some background, Comprise is our third business in the data and storage market. Um, prior to this, we had a company that eliminated SAN storage for virtual desktops. So it was, uh, the company was called Kaviza, the product, it was a scale out architecture that eliminated SAN storage for VDI, and Citrix acquired that business. Um, and uh, the product became a part of the Citrix Zen desktop product family. Uh, so after doing that, we created Comprise based on what customers told us, because customers were telling us that today they're literally drowning in data. And uh, increasingly, many of them want to use new technologies like cloud and object storage but it's not easy to stitch that into their current framework. That's what led us to create Comprise. Comprise is over three years old. We're based in Silicon Valley in California. Uh, we are venture backed and we work with all the major storage players in the market. So we're partners with NetApp, with EMC, with uh, Quantum, Spectralogic, uh, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Azure, Scality, these are just some of our partners, you know, IBM, Cleversafe, et cetera. So what do we do? Well, if you look at the data challenges that companies have, and maybe some of you in this room also have some of these issues, um, the problems to do that companies face today are that you know, data footprint is growing fast. Um, in some industries, it might be growing at 30 40% year over year. Uh, some industries like genomics, it's growing at 200, 300, 400% year over year. But as all this data footprint is growing, um, many companies are interested in leveraging new storage innovations. So on the one end, you have flash storage for high performance. Then on the capacity end, you have things like object storage, uh, which uh, helps you create a private cloud. Uh, and then the cloud itself, uh, and even uh, areas like tape and disk have had a lot of innovations for capacity storage. Things like nearline disk, where they power down the disk for more efficiency, didn't exist years ago, but exist now. So if you want to leverage these new storage innovations, and you can look at the summit here, the Deltaware Summit, so many new storage vendors here showing different kinds of storage, right? How do you take advantage of each of these uh, new storage innovations without lifting and shifting data? Because lifting and moving data from one environment to another is very disruptive for users and applications. That's where uh, we help. Uh, because most companies today are looking at how can we squeeze in all this data growth and leverage these new storage innovations while keeping costs down, because IT budgets are not growing uh, at the rate that data is growing. IT budgets are mostly staying flat. <laughs> so you have to do more with less. 
right? Uh, and you cannot afford to disrupt users. You know, doing a paradigm shift for users, asking them to rewrite everything in a new way is not easy. It takes time. So how can you bridge these worlds? That's the problem that we solve. The way we solve this problem is through software. So we are a, a purely software solution. We don't have any storage of our own. We actually run just as virtual machines in your environment. And what we do is um, you take our virtual machine, which we call the Comprise Observer, and you literally just power it on in your environment and just point it at the storage that you have today. How do you point it at your storage? You just give uh, Comprise NFS or SMB SIFS access to your storage. So any storage that you have today, no matter which vendor it's from, it could be NetApp, it could be uh, IBM, it could be Dell, it could be EMC, it could be HDS, doesn't matter. As long as it can expose an NFS or SMB SIFS path, that's all you give Comprise access to. Once you give us that access, within minutes, Comprise will profile your data. Even petabytes of data, you will get results in, within 15 minutes. Um, and I'll show you in a demo how we do that. But it'll profile your data. It will show you what data is being used, what's not being used, and how fast your data is growing. In most environments, 60 to 70% of data is not used over a, in, uh, in, has not been used in over a year. Uh, sometimes it's about 90% of data hasn't been used in over six months. Uh, and yet, it's consuming expensive storage resources. So what kind of data is the data? Uh, to do this analysis, yes. For, at first, we are just using metadata from, from the file systems. There is no other confidential data? No confidential data being used, none of that. And you can also, I'll show you also how you can exclude certain data. Are you able to see the screen OK, or is it blurry? Uh, how can we, can we refine the screen in, in any way? Uh, it's my slide? Okay, well, I'll show the demo, then we can see, because that's a live demo. Uh, I'll show it to you in a second. You'll see the screen better. Uh, once you do the analysis, along with it, you can actually set policies. And when you set policies on what you, data you want to move or replicate, as you set the policies, we will project for you the ROI of those policies. So nothing has moved yet. We're just showing you if you did this, what will happen, okay? And I, all of this is interactive. I'll show this to you in a demo. But once you do that, if you like what you see, you can activate the plan. And when you activate the plan, what Comprise does is, unlike prior solutions in the space where the, the, the solution would need to be in line, meaning that it would be in the path of all the data, we are not in line. You know, Comprise is not in your hot data path. So Comprise actually sits behind your data path, and without using any stub files or agents, Comprise moves your data from the sources to the targets that you set. So for example, you could say, I want to move data from a uh, HDS system maybe to the cloud, you know, and, and if you set that to Amazon, let's say. If you set that as your goal, Comprise will move data based on the policy you set. You might have said anything over a year old, move it. We will move that data, and when it moves the data, those files that we moved will look like they're still there on the HDS system, okay? And we do that without using any static stub files or agents. It is bidirectional. So the question was, is this move unidirectional or bidirectional? It's bidirectional. Any source can also be a target. Any target can also be a source. When we move the data, we move it. And when you, if a user goes, let's say we moved something that was over a year old, we moved it to the cloud. Now, suddenly, users are starting to access it again. When they go to access it, then we get called and we bring we we leave the data still in the target, but we cache it when we return it back. The Comprise virtual machine caches it, and if it gets reaccessed a lot or if it gets written to, 
we recognize that it's getting hot and we write it back to the source. So at that point, it gets moved back to the source. And the data that is moved by us, uh, hopefully you can see this, this is before a move what a folder looks like. And this is that same folder after the move. The red rectangles I added just to show you the files that we moved. If you look at it, you cannot tell the difference. You can, from a user looking at it, will see no difference for data that is locally on that source versus data that is now sitting in a target. It looks the same, all the attributes are the same, access control's the same, everything's unchanged. The only thing that'll be different is if you went and saw the size on disk, not the logical size, but size on disk, it'll be a kilobyte or less, you know, it'll be smaller. So it's completely transparent to users or applications when we move the data. So do you archive if you have a feature of archive? Yes, this, the question was, do we archive the data? When we move data, when we are moving cold data, you can think of that as an active archival. So we are archiving that data to, uh, to a different tier or to different storage, but we're doing it transparently. So the data is still accessible from the source. So that is definitely one use case where you can use the product. And the way the technology works is, um, historically products in this space had problems. Uh, they used to either be very complex to deploy, or they would be costly, or they would be invasive in terms of performance of the primary storage. Comprise eliminates all those issues. So for example, uh, it is completely non-invasive because Comprise does not put any agents on any of the storage. To the to the or source storage, Comprise just looks like a client, like any other NFS or SMB client. There's no special change needed on the storage for Comprise to work. We do not get in the path of hot data. Comprise is completely invisible to the data path. We're only in the path of data that we moved. Uh, so there's no performance reduction on the hot data. And Comprise does not use any static stub files, so there's no issues of stubs getting orphaned or going missing or deleted because Comprise is not in that, in, in that you know, it's not, doesn't use that technology. We don't use a central database, so there's no central database bottlenecks. Comprise is a pure scale-out architecture. Um, and there's no lock-in, you know, it works across all storage. Uh, you can go from any source to any target. Uh, so it's not tied to a particular vendor uh, because we're not storage. We work across all storage with, through standard protocols. And the architecture itself is a pure scale-out architecture. So Comprise has two pieces to it. Uh, it has the virtual machines that we call the Comprise observers that run on-premise. And you can start with just one observer virtual machine, and that's what's analyzing your storage and moving the data and giving you access to data. And that virtual machine talks to the management console, which I'm going to show you uh, in a demo. The management console is another virtual machine. So you could deploy both virtual machines in your data center, or you could deploy the management console in a cloud if you want uh, it as a hybrid cloud service. Yeah. How do I interact with it? Do you have CLI or everything is web-based? Do we, the question was, how do you interact with Comprise? Do we have CLI or is everything web-based? Um, we are adding a CLI API to the whole solution. Today, customers are interacting with it through the web uh, interface. They interact with it through the through UI, but there is a command line uh, API to the product as well. Okay, and that that you know uh, that we have. So the the virtual machines themselves run in a, a fault tolerant scale out architecture, meaning that in production you have at least two virtual machines running per site. So it's always highly available, because if one virtual machine goes down, the other virtual machine picks up that slack automatically, okay? And it's a scale-out architecture. As you have more data to manage, you just add more virtual machines, and the system just, ex it's like a Lego block, so it just expands on its own, okay? And they're all managed as one. 
with that background, before I go further with the presentation, maybe I'll show you actually what the product looks like. Okay. So when you set up Comprise, what you do is literally just download the Comprise virtual machine. And we have a free trial. If you're interested in trying it in your environment, we can enable a free trial for you. Uh, essentially, if you started with a free trial, you would get the Comprise Observer virtual machine. You would literally just power it on in your hypervisor. And then you would be brought into this management console. And you would come in here, and you would actually give Comprise access to your storage environment. And the way you would do that is literally by just giving the store, pointing Comprise at your storage. Uh, and for this, all we need is read credentials to the storage. Okay? So you could have Isilon, you could have NetApp, you could have Windows servers, you could have you know, NetApp 7 and CDOT. It doesn't matter what, what storage you have. You literally just give it the, the IP address of the storage and have Comprise discover the shares. And once it discovers the shares, you can enable the shares that you want Comprise to look at. Okay? Once you do this, all the data on those shares, Comprise will give you a profile of that data. So here, the first thing it profiles is it shows you by age a distribution of your data. So it's saying that across these shares, we're looking at five shares here. Across these five shares, we have 195 terabytes of data. Of that data, 28% hasn't been used in over two years. And another, about 28.5%, hasn't been used in over a year. So you can kind of see a profile of what your data footprint looks like. Um, and you can also get information on different kinds of file analytics on that data. So we can see that a lot of the data in this environment is actually video. Uh, followed by archive and log files. And for each type, we can see a distribution again by age of that data. Um, we can also get statistics on things like, you know, whether the uh, data is big files or small files, you know, who's using the data, um, which groups are accessing it, you know, what directories they are in, all these kinds of information. So this entire profile of your data is available to you uh, just by simply adding the storage that you want us to look at into the environment. Once you do that, Comprise gives you all this analytics. Okay? It also shows you how fast your data is growing. It gives you a growth uh, curve. Just have to, uh, I think, maybe make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Uh, you, it shows you that if you did nothing, this data footprint is growing at about uh, in this example, it's growing at about 13.5% every year. Uh, and this is based on actual historical growth on these shares. So Comprise calculates all of this from looking at your shares and looking at the data on it. Um, and as it's doing this, you notice there's some cost numbers here on the right. These are the effect of the plan that we're creating here. So essentially what we can do is, as Comprise is showing you this analytics, we can interactively set some policies here. So in this example, we have created three different policy groups. And in a policy group, we can set, pick some shares, and we can set some objectives on those shares. Sorry, I'm not able to look at the screen and click the mouse. So here we could say, for example, for these shares in Boston, we want to move anything that is over six months old. So watch as I move this slider, what happens to the little orange circle on the right-hand side. So I'm going to move the slider from one year to six months. When I drop it, I don't know if you noticed, but this orange crept up. So it's saying with that change, now 72% of the data will get moved off these shares. And that would cost 207 terabytes to be freed up over three years based on the growth rates on these shares. And so much of the backup footprint would get freed up because this data is not being kept on primary anymore. It's not changing. It doesn't need to be backed up. So you, all that backup footprint would be reduced. And here's your cost savings. Okay? So you can get an interactive ROI projection of any policy you pick before you actually implement anything. You can, you can set policies to move data. 
to replicate data. You can pick different targets for the data. Here we have a couple of targets enabled, but we can change those. We can go up here um, and um, we can actually add more targets. The targets can be on-premise or cloud targets. So in the cloud, it could be Amazon or Azure or Google. Uh, and on-premise, we could add any NAS as a target, um, or we could add a particular object store as a target. Okay? So you, as you pick these targets, then you can use those targets in your plan. So essentially what Comprise is doing is, it's giving you analytics and a profile of your data across all your storage, because many customers don't have visibility into what's happening to their data footprint. And it's giving you a way to create a data management plan, visualize the ROI of that plan, and then when you're done with everything and you're ready to actually move data, you simply activate the plan. And when you activate the plan, Comprise actually starts moving data based on your objectives, and it, actually, and it actually continues to show you what happens to your footprint as you move data. So you see there's a little bit of a blue here because it's starting to move that data out based on your policies. So even as it's moving data, it's showing you how your footprint is changing and how much of the data is sitting where. Uh, so you get complete analytics and visualization all the way through. So it's an analytics-driven data management solution uh, that's giving you ongoing analytics into your data footprint and giving you a way to manage it. How frequent do you update the data throughput? Yes. How frequently do we update the data, uh, the analytics of the data? Retrieval. The data retrieval. What do you mean by data retrieval? Because you said that there was a blue part of the. Uh, oh, the, yes. I thought it would be an interval. It's, there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. So this, uh, the UI itself is refreshing every, I think, minute or so here, but Comprise is continuously moving the data. It's just that it's painting the screen. Um, you know, at, at some refresh rate. So it's pretty chatty then. It's pretty wild on the network. No, it's not. So com that's a great question. The question was, what does Comprise do to your network and your file system performance? Um, and Comprise is an adaptive architecture. So essentially what we do is, we stay typically under 2.5% of the load on your file systems. Because Comprise throttles itself back when it's doing work on the file system, it watches the load on the file system. And if the file system is getting used by users or other applications, Comprise slows itself down. Because essentially what we're doing is long-term data management. And we don't have to do this as fast as possible. We have to do it as non-invasively as possible. So our idea is to be completely non-intrusive. It's like a housekeeper, right? You don't want your housekeeper cleaning the, the kitchen while you're eating dinner. Right? That, that's, that's what this is. It's a housekeeper of data. So what are the security measures we are taking? Because we are moving huge, huge files, right? A number of files from one place to another place. Data gets lost or hacked to some reason, right? So what is the backdrop we have? What are the security measures we have? Right. So the question was, when we're moving a lot of data from one place to the other, uh, what happens to the safety of that data, and what kind of disaster recovery mechanisms would we have? So those are two different uh, elements. I'll cover both. So when you move data, Comprise encrypts the data that is moved, and we provide we support two ways to encrypt data. So by default, we encrypt at rest, meaning that data is transferred securely. And when you store it, it's encrypted at that target storage. So it, either in the cloud or, or on your object storage. If you want more security than that, we support encryption at source, which means that before you move the data through customer provided keys, so you hold the master key. And with that master key, we generate keys from it. We use that to encrypt the data. The encrypted data is moved, so even if something happens to your network, data is encrypted, and that, you know, nobody can see it. It's stored encrypted, and, you're, and it's, when it's restored by a user, that's when we're using those generated keys to restore it. You have to hold on to the master key in that environment, because if you lose the master key, 
nobody has any way of getting that data back, but we do support both. We support encryption, and it's AES, AES encryption. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, the question was what? That's a great question. What happens if, as we're moving a file, something happened to the network, the file didn't move fully? Everything Comprise does is, in, is consistent at the atomic level. So what we do is, when we move data, until the data is fully moved and coherency is fully checked at the target, we don't delete it from the source. So during the transfer, the data is actually there in two places. Right, and all the access is going to the source. Only after it's fully there in the target and fully verified to be, to be accurate, only then will the source be replaced with the link. So the, your data always is, is protected at all times. And also, usually when we're moving data, we're moving it to a resilient storage, like object or cloud, where multiple copies of the data are kept. Um, you can also that's uh, you can also have a second DR copy kept somewhere else. That's why if you saw the product, it had a move and a copy. You can also keep DR copies. And Compress does automatic failover as well in DR scenarios across sites. So great questions. Uh, the other uh, issue that I mentioned that some of the traditional solutions in this space had is that they were just very expensive. Uh, Comprise is designed to help you save 70% plus of your costs of, by moving the data. And so our own pricing uh, is uh, on how much data you manage through the system. Uh, and the pricing is $150 a terabyte for every terabyte that we manage. So this is our line. Uh, and we're just showing you an example ROI, including all the other costs. Uh, but, the, but that is the comprised cost. You know, it's $150 a terabyte for every terabyte we manage on the source, and we don't count the copies. So, so you, can, you can move it and copy it, and it, it's all just the one terabyte. We don't charge extra for those things. Okay. So it's designed to save over 70% of costs. So we have customers across different verticals. Um, we have customers definitely uh, in most of the data intensive verticals, like genomics and healthcare, um, financial services, um, definitely um, in a public sector, education and government, um, engineering and manufacturing, media entertainment, uh, oil and gas and retail are some of the verticals where we have customers. I think I have a couple of use cases here. Uh, so one of our customers is a, a Fortune uh, 10 uh, global financial services company. Unfortunately, I can't name the customer's name, uh, but they're one of the top five insurance companies in the world. Um, and they use a comprise worldwide across all their sites. Um, and some of the challenges they have is, you know, financial services, you have to retain data for a very long time. Um, a lot of that data is, was created by users that are not even in the company anymore, uh, but cannot be deleted for regulatory reasons. Uh, but it's consuming expensive resources. Uh, and so with Comprise, we're identifying that data and moving it to cheaper storage and making it uh, more cost efficient. Uh, and of course, then we're also helping them give DR in the cloud uh, and, uh, and moving other data to object storage. Uh, we also have customers in uh, genomics. Uh, you know, genomics data is growing rapidly. Uh, I think it's projected that in a year, all the genomics data is going to surpass all content ever uploaded on YouTube. <laughs> and uh, so, um, definitely, uh, genomics customers um, they, they want to keep that data because it's valuable for future analytics. But they have to reduce the cost of that footprint. Uh, so Pacific Biosciences is a maker of genomics instruments, uh, and they use Comprise uh, on their data uh, to manage their data uh, across their environments. Um, so that's our presentation in a nutshell. Um, I uh, appreciate your time. I appreciate your questions. If you have more questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for coming. <laughs>